I appreciate everybody coming today. Uh, it's a sad day for uh, Rick's family and uh, for his friends, for his former players, and the entire University of Utah community. Um, and many of those who are beneficiaries of his friendship and his coaching, his great work on the court, and for the academic success of his players and the personal growth of those that were involved in the program. Um, I found out about Rick's passing uh, yesterday. Uh, Mr. Huntsman called me his good friend, as did Kent Jones, his uh, longtime surgeon, who has been Rick, with Rick uh, many, many years and on his side and uh, had an intense uh, caring for Rick and spent a lot of time with him as a tireless physician with him and a friend. Uh, the funeral uh, will be um, on Saturday. Uh, it is my understanding that it will be in Milwaukee. Um, I will have the opportunity to go with uh, Mr. Huntsman and, and uh, represent the University of Utah. Um, in regards to his record, um, it's off the chart. We all know that. Uh, he won more than somebody could win. Uh, he had the preparation, attention to detail, motivation of players, development of players were unsurpassed. Um, our fans were proud of his team. Uh, and that's what many fans do. And they were smart teams, hardworking teams, unselfish teams. The demeanor on the court was impeccable. And that's what makes fans proud. Uh, I can tell you what I, I thought at the end of every game. And just to give you an example, and I can't tell how many times I sat there because I get nervous at a lot of games and a lot of sports. With five minutes to go in a game, up by four, it was over over our team the other team would look and say there's not going to be a bad shot there's not going to be a missed rebound there's not going to be something dumb on the court and there'll be times where you just watch the game up by four with two minutes to go and it was over you tell the other team say they'd go back to their huddle and shake their heads and coach there's no turnover going to happen they're going to get shot every time and you just see their shoulders slump and he just, in every way, as you know, the history is there, the record is there, and I could spend a lot of time with that, but he was unquestionably one of the unsurpassed in, in many ways in the coaching profession. Uh, we have plans uh, in place to honor Rick in different ways. We also are formulating some plans. Um, some of the things that are going on that will they'll be immediate, immediate will, have, um, of course, be a moment of silence at the game. Uh, we will have... Um, a video. Uh, the players will have some black patches and some of us will have something like that to recognize him. Uh, later on this year, his uh, sweater will be retired in the rafters with some of the other great players that he coached and other great players in the history of our game here at the University of Utah. Um, he will be placed in our Hall of Fame and the Crimson Cup Hall of Fame. I had the opportunity to talk with Rick um, this is past December and invite him into our Hall of Fame. Uh, he let, as you know, he was busy with uh, his team. Uh, he let me know in January. In December, I said, Rick, any year you want to come in, you just let me know. And the timing just didn't work out last year. And of course, we'll talk to family and friends and figure out what year is the best time, if not this year, we hope. Um, and I wanted people to know that. Um, we're also looking at opportunities. People have been kind of quiet with it, but we're doing a full-blown study of the Huntsman Center. Uh, uh, what other things? I've talked to John about ex you know, expansion and great opportunities. We're also putting together a basketball practice facility. So I think long term, uh, I would like to sit with some of the former players, uh, some of our coaches, some of our, our uh, supporters, and see what else we can do long term to recognize Rick. Um, I also talked to Chris May, the uh, director of athletics at St. Louis University today, and the two of us will work together, which we know will be an easy result to get Rick into the National uh, Hall of Fame for coaches. Um, his career uh, exploded during his time here, and the University of Utah's recognition exploded uh, following in his wake. Um, we are... Um, pleased to have the opportunity to have worked with somebody that uh, was one of a kind, there's no question. Um, essentially, he was, like I said before, a genius and a savant in basketball. 
He died way too soon at 64. I think many of us uh, knew maybe that day was coming. Uh, we've enjoyed a, a legacy that's deep and will be long. And in a school like ours that has such a basketball tradition, that's a heck of a comment on somebody that uh, has been so, so very successful, so passionate, and somebody that uh, brought so much attention to our great university. So with that said, uh, I'd love to um, answer any questions for you. As Liz said, uh, I think today's a day to, to answer some questions and uh, not cloud it with some other folks or other days. So any questions from the folks out here? Chris, uh, can you elaborate a little bit on retiring the sweater, what the thoughts were, and if you're going to do that this season, and, and what the heck, are you going to hang a real sweater up there? What are you going to do? <laughs> oh, I don't, you know, uh, just makes sense. I mean, you know, the, you know Frank Layton, uh, they retired his jersey in the Jazz, and they chose to put a number one up there. It just, it doesn't make any sense. And done, you know, we're, we're not going to hang up a sweater that's just a sweater. You know, it's going to match uh, and Rick would want it's it's part of a team that's up there in those rafters and is a, a select team and we don't want it we want people to know it's Rick we don't want it to be out there to be so different than the great players that are up there so it'll be some kind of thing that that you'll know is is a sweater but at the same time it won't diminish anybody else that's out there that has got that recognition. Chris how long did it take you to know that you hired a pretty special coach. I mean, he obviously came highly recommended, but I mean, how long into his tenure did you know that he was pretty special? You know, it's interesting. Um, when I hired him, um, well, that story is 25 stories, but when I hired him, uh, we did this handwritten contract, and he said, well, what do you want my team to do? You know, and you knew Rick, he would say it like that, and I said, I just want him to have a plan right now. I want him to go to class, which is, you know, a little child. I want them to behave themselves and all those good things, and I just want you to have a plan. You know, I want to be able to do that. He said, what do you mean? I said, well, last year we were tie score at the end of the game and uh, no shot clock. We had the ball, and our fifth best shooter took a fall away jump shot with 15 seconds to go. So I said, Rick, I just want a plan at the end of the game. That's all. We don't have to win. Just your team has to plan. So... His fourth game there, we were playing Purdue, which was, you know, it was a tie ball game. We were down by one, I think it was. Like I said, my memory's a little strange that way. And he had Tommy Connor, who was our point guard, best player, and Josh Grant, our best shooter, and ran a screen. And I don't want to get too technical because every coach knows I don't know anything about coaching. But um, Tommy hit Josh for a wide open jump shot, and Josh missed it. I went in the locker room, I said, that was a plan. Best player best passer, playing to open your best shooter, and you'll make the shot. You know, so I knew right then and there, and they did exactly what he told them to do. And coaching is, is getting them to do what you want them to do when they're supposed to do it. And we don't know. So I knew he could do that. I didn't know he'd be as good as he was, but to answer your question, that's the first one I knew we had somebody who knew what they were doing.